I saw this in, in uh, Toronto, and it made me wonder um, about the analogy between your character, how he feels about recognition initially, and how it tarnishes. And I thought there might be an analogy for you with fame. Um, when you first get famous, it's all sparkly, and then you have other aspects. Did you reflect on that? Did it help to inform you? Uh, 100 percent. Uh, that is precisely how I received the screenplay. Um, I thought that it was a very uh, astute analysis of the experience of fame, what had happened to me with my so-called memification, uh, which is not something I signed up for when I decided to be a film actor. There was no reference point for that. It didn't exist in the early 80s. So that was an adjustment. And I thought that it was very similar to what Paul Matthews is going through with his dreamification, how fickle it can be, how it can turn. And I made the analysis, I'm not a gambler, but at the times when I had been gambling, that that's very similar to the experience of fame when you're winning and it feels great, uh, quickly you start losing and the fame can turn on you and the feelings of loss are more profound than the feelings of winning in the first place. And I think that's why some gamblers get addicted is that they wanna feel something, anything. And, he, and then the, the, the feelings of the loss uh, are, are much stronger than the win in the first place. And I think fame is like that as well. The other thing that was kind of shocking to me was how aggressive that young girl was. It wasn't about um, your character. It was about uh, getting into the fame circle. Uh, it was a notch on her belt. And I was wondering how you protect yourself because as an actor, you have to be open, but you also have to be protective of your personal space. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so I assume you're talking about a Dylan scene with me in the movie. Yeah, well, she was so good in that scene. And I hadn't thought about it in those terms before that you just said. I think that's fascinating. I think that, yeah, that works. Um, you know, I think it's the kind of thing where you live and learn. And after 45 years of doing this, you almost develop a second sight or a kind of empathic radar, if you will, where you, you can feel a flow with an energy when you meet people, what they might be having on their mind, if they're positive or negative, if they want to post something to get attention. And you can sense it pretty much right away. I think that's just something you, you learn uh, over time. It felt like you delved into deep places. Um, how do you release that when you're done? If it's going well, <clears throat> it can be released as you're doing it. A, a good scene is almost cathartic. And particularly because this movie was so personal for me, it wasn't written for me. It, 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 but, but when I signed on, it became clear to everybody around me that, that I was processing my own memification and I was trying to do something constructive with it. Um, and I'm thankful to say, I think I have, but uh, as a result of that completion, it's got me thinking. And I'm gonna be 60 next month and I'm taking stock on what's important. I think I've said just about as much as I can say in terms of my contribution to cinema. So I wanna try something else and maybe Broadway, maybe television. I wanna mix it up. I wanna spend more time with my family. So not move around so much. So to answer your question, it's, it's, it's giving me a feeling of completion. That's wonderful to hear. So enjoy your performance as I always yeah. do. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview.